will be a radiation storm beginning at 3 p.m. today. All suburban and city traffic is advised to use the tunnelways for the duration. I know. I know. Please wait, listen to me, okay? I didn't forget about the dinner. I I know. I, look, I'm so... Wait, listen. Just please. I found myself in this position when the government took over the entire project from a computer company. I was working at the National Hospital of Maryland as a computer analyst in the cancer research wing until I applied for a transfer. Why? I was sick and tired of working at a hospital. I needed a change. Is that Dr. Geiger? He looks so old. Maybe it's just my answering machine as always. He's the team leader of this project. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Um, I'd like to welcome you all here today. My name is Dr. John Parker, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Michael Geiger on my left. I'm sure you're all very familiar with his research. The subject came to us. Dr. Geiger and our staff are driven to realize our vision. The body has been cryogenically suspended. Our staff began by thawing the subject while simultaneously introducing plasma 5G7. This is the artificial blood substitute created in the last century. Even so, they say, it's the latest generation available. Since the subject is chained to the main frame, we have flat lines on all his vitals. The subject should be ready to accept reanimation through computer control, but this is the most daunting obstacle facing the project. If this union of computer and human body is completed, then we will bypass the life support system to maintain the subject's bodily functions. Then I'm going to be babysitting. From now on, there is so much information waiting to be analyzed. We start with reference data gathered from a previous subject. The mainframe has been studying the current subject for the past five days, which is considerably longer than the time spent studying the last body. The mainframe has been occupied by converting the analog signals from the feedback of its analysis to its binary mass storage. The subject's vital signs are still stable, although it doesn't respond to our commands. We haven't seen any signs of independent activity from the body under the influence of the main frame, but everything we've been sending to the subject has been based entirely on the feedback from that initial computer analysis. Dr. Geiger has decided to resort to using radioactive tracers for a more finely detailed analysis. The trouble with using tracers is that the central nervous system can only withstand so much radiation for so long before the synapses start misfiring uncontrollably. But unanticipated by the staff was the subject's allergic reaction to the radioactive tracers. The radioactive tracers were promptly flushed out of the subject with a fresh infusion of plasma 5G7. Dr. Geiger was prepared to hook the body back up to the life support system when he feared that extensive damage had been done to the subject's nervous tissues. After spending hours poring over the mainframe's analysis of the subject's nervous connections and the signal patterns it had sent to the body, I slowly brought together the elements of an answer to Dr. Geiger's dilemma. 
I began to think of how my own living computer has such sophisticated control over my own living muscles, and it hit me. The answer was in the way I have had to train my body to move so gracefully. It takes repeated practiced movements of the muscles I want control over. We must move the subject's muscles for the mainframe to learn to control them. Should be possible to locate another subject by early next week. I talked with Boston this morning and they've offered the use of the facility. Good, good. I'll uh, present our research at the next Sciences Congress. Tell me, uh, which facility is going to be continue to receive government funding? I've never felt so alive until today.